Hello all, I'm going to give you a quick demonstration on how to make a beefier kick drum sound, especially if you don't have those sub frequencies that you like, the kind that hits you in the chest, the kind that makes the subwoofer in your car rattle, those kinds of sounds. If you're missing that in your kick drum, here's a technique that's been around for decades. Back in the old analog console days, I used to use this with an oscillator and a gate. You can do the same thing in Pro Tools very easily. So I'm going to just take this kick drum, which is going to have a nice attack, but doesn't have any low end thump that I don't feel in my chest. So what I need to do is send that to a bus, send that to a gate, and key the gate off of that. So I'm going to create an, a sine wave generator. So I'm going to make a new track here. Go under Track, New, make a mono aux input track. Hit Create. And then I'm going to create a sine wave generator. And that's just a standard DigiDesign plugin. Um, go down to Other, Signal Generator, and you'll pull a sine wave out of it. I can bypass it to turn it off. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a gate to that. So I want that to be gated, but I want to trigger that off the kick drum. So I'm going to go in and pull up the standard Avid gate, the this uh, expander gate, the Dyne 3 expander gate. Apply that on there. I'm going to take the range, dial it all the way down, take the ratio, dial it all the way up, kick as fa attack as fast as possible, and then... Uh, I'm going to create a bus from the kick drum. So I'm going to make a send. I'm going to use the send that I'm not using, which is just bus 1 for the time being. I'm going to select bus 1. I'm going to option click the fader to send it to 0. I'm going to set it to pre-fader. That way, the send going to my gate is going to be constant no matter what I do with the fader level of the kick drum. So that's being sent bus 1 pre-fader. Then I'm going to go to the expander gate. And then I'm going to set the key input, which is right here. And I'm going to click on that and select bus 1. So my kick drum gets sent to that gate. So I have a hit play, and I click this, and I click this key button. You'll see kick showing up on the input there. Now if I mute the track, if I hit mute, and then I can click on this listen. So I click on the listen button, I'll be able to hear that kick drum track in my uh, gate so I know how I'm dialing it in with the as with regards to the threshold. And that looks pretty good just as is with the threshold where it's at. So now all I need to do is turn on the signal generator and hear if it's triggering correctly. So I'm going to keep it at the uh, whatever frequency it's at. It looks to be at, at 1 kilohertz. So I'm going to unbypass that. And then I'm going to make sure to turn the listen off. Now as I bring the frequency down of that signal generator, I'll start approaching those sub-frequencies kind of around 60 hertz-ish. And those are the frequencies that you really feel in your chest. And if you hear too much of the little clicky sound of the gate opening up, you can just adjust the attack time ever so slightly upward, and that'll get rid of that poppiness, which is basically the, the gate opening up too fast. And now I'm going to blend that in with the kick drum and dial in the level between the two to my liking. And now I'm going to play with the uh, um, hold and release time so I can adjust the duration of that boominess.
And there you have it. You've made a kick drum that thumps you in the chest from one that was just a very clicky sounding instrument. So that's one of the many things you can do to kind of beef up a kick drum track.